Christine Mutzner. I'm the manager of the Nanaimo Archives. Today we are launching a very special project. We are calling it History She Wrote, and it is a series of conversations with local women authors who write history, who write specifically Vancouver Island, Nanaimo, or even BC history. So our very first guest, and we're quite thrilled to have her, is Haley Healy. Hi, Haley. Hi, Christine. And how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Thank you for having me. And I know you're going to tell us this a little bit later on, but something exciting happened for you yesterday. So you can tell us towards the end uh, that that'll that'll hook them in. <laughs> okay, sounds um, good. What we're going to start with is I was wondering the the focus of this particular thing that I'm trying to do is to talk to authors and see what their process is, see what it's like to research and write and uh, produce local histories. I'm really, um, as an archives person, that's really interesting to me and, and to people who love archives. So, but we have to start, we should begin at the beginning always. Could you tell us a little bit about your personal background? Yes, uh, certainly. So I um, was raised in Muskoka, Ontario, which is cottage country. Um, north of Toronto in Ontario and that's where I grew up um, big lakes forests and um, after my undergraduate I a uh, degree I moved out to British Columbia uh, to work at an outdoor ed center and to tree plant um, and from there I ended up um, doing my teaching degree and um, and then eventually landed um, in Nanaimo and have well, lived here for, yeah, lived here for quite a while now. So that's an interesting arc in the sense that you landed in Nanaimo and within a fairly short period of time, you're writing a, a BC bestseller about Vancouver Island women. I mean, that's quite the story. <laughs> so uh, I think it'd be really interesting if you could tell us a little bit about uh, what spurred you in the very first place to even want to do that. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, thank you. And I'm yeah, absolutely thrilled. It's um, done so well. And I'm just so glad people have enjoyed it mostly. Um, so my personal hobbies are um, and like passions are exploring um, like backcountry and exploring um, wilderness areas by kayak, by foot, uh, by bicycle. And so I did and um, so I did quite a few trips when I moved to the island here and one of them a few years back was to Cougar Annie's Garden out in um, off of Tofino about an hour a little over an hour by boat from Tofino and we had hiked the Hesquia Peninsula for five days and then toured Cougar Annie's Garden and it was there okay. that I, I was inspired to write a book about um, amazing women from Vancouver Island and so I just, yeah, it got me wondering, are there more women who are, yeah, who had done amazing things, like Kurani had created this beautiful garden in this very remote setting and mm -hmm. um, raised 13 children out there and um, just, yeah, lived quite this remarkable life. So I started finding more and I found there were so many more and that's when I started writing um, that's when I started writing the book. Um, I've always loved reading too. It's always been a passion mm -hmm. of mine since I was a really little girl. I've just loved books, loved reading. And so I think, um, that was part of the natural piece to want to create a book and for people to enjoy it. Um, and I, and I like the saying, um, write what you want to read. So I sort of right. always kind of just listened to that and held on to that. So, well, I know that you are, uh, a person who loves to read because if anyone goes to your website you'll see a list of books you recommend and it's quite wonderful it's it's very uh, interesting um so that spurred you on and cougar annie is a fascinating story so remote 13 children it's hard for me to even kind of grasp that experience but it's fascinating um so what was then your process how did you even let's say start with cougar annie how did you find information or what how did you go about it yeah, so I um, broke down, I think it, like it was a lot to look at all at once. So I broke it down into stories and started with Cougar Annie. Um, I went to, um, I went to the archives. Um, BC archives had a lot of information. 
Um, I also was able to find quite a bit about Cougar Annie from uh, Margaret Horsfield's book um, called mm -hmm. Cougar Annie's Garden. So I was able to find out um, quite a bit from there. And I also, as much as I could during the process, I interviewed people who had known the women and um. did some personal interviews with them. So uh, Peter Buckland is um, had been a, a dear friend of, of Cougar Annie and uh, he had um yeah he ended up buying her property and he had looked after her and um he had quite a bit of information as well and I, it was great to interview him it's kind of the best of both worlds isn't it as wonderful as documentary records are and i certainly as an archives person must say that but it is true there's something very especially really older stuff that's handwritten say there's something very intimate about that but the combination of documentary records and that it would, could, would include photographs and actually speaking to people who knew her is the best of both worlds, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's great. Yes. So after you were done with that, then did you just decide to write, just keep on looking or for more people? So, yeah, so it's interesting how that happened. Um, I, yeah, wrote about the other, yeah. So I finished that and then um, Heritage House, actually the publisher Heritage House, um, who on their own terms, uh, who published on their own terms, approached me and asked if um, I'd be interested in um, a few of the profiles from the first book going into the second and if I had anybody else who I had maybe missed and I actually did so it was perfect and it was very exciting and just like a really big shout out to Heritage House um, for for the opportunity to write a second mm -hmm. book and just was so thrilled and am so thrilled and so actually there were a few stories that I had uh, or a few women who I discovered after on their own terms had come out. And I really just thought, darn, I forgot, I forgot them. And actually one of them was, one of them I discovered at the Nanaimo um, Heritage um, Society's meeting, um, the Valencia presentation. Um, that's where I oh. heard of Minnie, Minnie Patterson. So from there I was able to, um, yeah, just dive into some information about Minnie Patterson and, I uh, went to the Port Alberni um, archives and found out a little bit more about her. So that second book is called? Um, the second book is called um, Flourishing and Free, More True Stories of Trailblazing Women of Vancouver Island. So in total, with both books, and, and I said we were going to say this at the end, but we'll say it now, it doesn't matter. Um, Flourishing and Free came out yesterday. It's, it's available as of yesterday, right? Um, yes. In, in total, how many women's stories did you cover? So there are 17 in the first book on their own terms, and there are 16 in the second book. So wow. the 33 altogether. That's a lot of storytelling. Holy mackerel, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, and it's a range of women with different expertise, different lives, different experiences. So you know, it's very relatable. It, the readers are going to relate to something in there, right? Um, I absolutely think so, for sure. Yeah, because there's just so many to choose from. It's a virtual smorgasbord of interesting <laughs> women. Um, what well, During your research, during the process of your research, was there anything, an event, a person, or anything that really surprised you? I think what surprised me the most is um, that I hadn't heard of many of these women that I just that I hadn't heard of them and with some of the amazing things that they had done. Um, definitely like individuals, um, their sort of accomplishments amazed mm -hmm. me. For example, Minnie Patterson, who I'd mentioned before, she um was a the wife of a light keeper at Cape Beale and she ended up hiking what is now the West Coast Trail way before it was the West Coast Trail she hiked mm. it at night in a huge storm to save some shipwrecked sailors um so quite amazing she hiked it with her dog and instead of she was going to turn around to go or uh, they had assumed once she got there and the ship went out to save the shipwrecked sailors, her job was done. They assumed she'd stay over at the um, the telegraph um, cabin for the night. And she said, no, I'm heading back. She went back across the trail the same way she had come to go back to her, to go back to her children. So just in these amazing stories, but just how I hadn't heard yeah. of um, so many of these women, even um, so on the cover of 
flourishing and free. Uh, this is Edith um, Heimbrough uh, Schleich, Schleicher, and she was a really good friend of Emily Carr. And so oh. um, I'd never heard of her before. And she was um, quite the artist in her own right. And so I think just how amazing the accomplishments were and how I hadn't heard of them is, is the biggest thing that surprised me. I mean, that seems to have been, uh, a, a, it's basically true is that these women's stories come out little bit by little bit over the last generation or so, but there's still so many more to tell. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the Telegraph Telegraph Creek book. That's the uh, women of Telegraph Creek. You must. It's very interesting. Um, uh, I think you'll enjoy that a lot. But I guess at the end of the day, I'm assuming, and I, I think it's true, is that your books will become reference material because they're also readable. They're not. Um, you could pick one up and and read and say, oh, how what an interesting story, and then put it away and then go back to it. It's a really great, almost functions like a little encyclopedia of the women of Vancouver Island. It's going to end up being a reference book in almost, you know, in archives and libraries, that kind of thing. And you've brought to light women that we likely, maybe were well known in their own little area, but not very well known. So you're bringing them to light, which is always a fantastic thing. Um, you know, 50% of the population, or actually I believe 51. So they should be, we should know about them. Um, is there anything, even though you've done two books on these women, is there anything that you would have feel that you would like to have fit in, but for whatever reason, editorial or space or time, you couldn't? Is there anybody else you would like to have put in there? Um, I mean, I think there's lots more. Um, so there's always room for maybe, who knows, there would be a third. I think what I would like to do and what I um, am working on is uh, a fiction based on um, some of the, well, I do, I'm working on a fiction based on one of the women from one of the books. Uh -huh. So um, that I think I just like, I really think um, fiction based on lives and based on women's lives are fascinating books. And I just, mm -hmm. as a fiction lover and as a reader to learn about historical fiction through story is just amazing. Um, it is. And for most people, for a lot of people who don't like sort of straight histories as much, to have it set in a narrative that is compelling in other ways is the is the way they learn history, right? So that's kind of a cool thing too. Um, I would like to share my screen for a second so that people, I know you held up the books, but so they can, I'm going to hold it for a couple seconds so that people can get a good look at them if they want to um, just know what they look like and if they want to jot down the title. So so there's the first one and then the second one. Okay, I'm going to stop that. I hope everybody got those titles down. And would you know, could you tell us some of the outlets that they're selling the books at? at? Yes, for sure. So if you're in Nanaimo, uh, Window Seat Books carries them. Uh, Window Seat Books is in the old city quarter um, just near Stella Trattoria. And um, Literacy Central Vancouver Island has the first book right now, and um, hopefully later we'll have the second. And any local bookstore, really, um, on Vancouver Island, many of the local bookstores, Qualicum, Parksville, Duncan, um, down in Victoria, and Monroe's, and um, Bolin Books, both, have, both carry it. Um, so yeah, local bookstores would be number one, and... Um, Literacy Central Vancouver Island, and then uh, the Farmer's Market, the online Farmer's Market in Nanaimo oh. also has it. Um, so that was a great little outlet. And then, of course, um, Last Resort um, online and Amazon. Well, you know, wherever people can get it is good, right? I would just like to go back just for a moment to ask you. So I'm assuming you, you mentioned BC Archives and you've mentioned, uh, had you been before you took this on, had you been to many archives or research libraries before? No, I hadn't. Um, this was my first experience really um, learning that and figuring all of that out. Um, I definitely have always liked museums and interested in history in that way, but um, hadn't been to like archives or reading rooms or places like that. So mm. that was a really fabulous um, yeah, experience and 
just find like when you find one piece of information, it kind of leads you to another and, and mm -hmm. quite neat going down these rabbit holes of information. It's really very much like um, ends up being, you end up being a bit of a detective. And Absolutely. Um, that's the, that is the kind of fun part. People often think in, in our case, they think that it's, you know, some dusty old place and everybody sort of, I don't know, from 1908 or something, but really it's, it is, um, a process that doesn't just the process itself engages the mind because you have to think ten linear. You have to think straight ahead, but you also have to think of all these possible connections to uh, get your story, you know, cohesive and put together. So I think that's kind of cool that you got to experience that too. Um, Haley, thank you so much for doing this. Congratulations on not just the first book, which I, I hope I've already congratulated you for, but on the, publication of a second book. I I'm, think it's fantastic. I think it's wonderful that we have more women's history, Vancouver Island women's history. And um, again, I just thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me, Christine. I so appreciate the chance to talk about my, my books and talk about women's history. And yeah, thank you so much. <music>